hello and welcome back to my craft room it's a bit chilly here today it's like three degrees outside and 11 inside <laughs> so i'm a bit wrapped up so it's a lovely time to be uh, playing with some lovely bright colors this is now going to be the fourth video session session four in the uh, color inspiration journal series that um, some of you've been playing along with it's been so lovely to see all the different takes on this idea and it's one of those things that you can very much just do your own thing with it there are going to be as many takes on this on this project as there are people playing along. If you want to catch up from the beginning, I will link the Colour Inspiration Journal playlist in the description box. I will also link to the three other YouTubers that I know are playing along and, and filming what they're doing. That's Create and Craft with Christine. She's in Australia. There's Susie Q Makes here in the UK. And there's Tia from Calm Creates, I think Calm Creations. And um, I think she is she in New Zealand. I think so. Um, so I will link to them. If you know any other YouTubers who are also playing along, please do let me know and I'll add them in as well. Um, you can go to our free Discord community. There's a special colour inspiration journal um, room in there where you can share what you're doing with this and also our um, Arty Farty Annie Facebook group. I will leave my link tree in the description box and if you go there, you can find your way to both those places and we'll have a platforms and my email and everything it's all in there and I've had a couple of questions recently about how not being able to see that or what I mean by link tree if you go to the description box now I look on my phone PC not on the phone so this may be different on a phone but you just have to look below the video there's the description box you might have to click on more it might say more dot 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 you have to click on that or scroll down don't know how it works on your device but do whatever you need to do to bring up what's below the video and that's where you'll find the description box and in there you'll see something like go to my link tree blah 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 whatever I decide to put <laughs> and then underneath that will be a link just click on that go to the link tree you'll see look for Facebook group and discord and they're the places where that's where people they, they find their swaps as when we're doing the swaps and they show us all everything they're creating it, it, anything it's not we're not just talking stitching we're not just we're talking art stitching any kind of crafts whatever you do as long as it's creative you can share it with us in there and get lots of ideas and inspiration enough of that let's crack on <laughs> I'll show you what I've been up to. Last time I was in the process of nearly finishing my green book. I still haven't. I want to tie some pretties on here. I've got a few little bits to fill in in here. I'm not going to show you, bother showing you that again because we've seen all that before. Done a little bit more to my stitching though. I've sat in front of Doctor Who for a couple of evenings and just randomly just stitched, just followed the uh, random pieces of um, fabric and trims and stuff that I've put on there and stitched and stitched and stitched into it it's getting quite it feels lovely now I still want to put a few more of these gorgeous green sequins on and I have some beads just a mixture of got those in a little parcel from Leslie the other day but these are all kind of old beads that I've had for ages I want to put some of those in so I'm still not finished I will carry on with it in session three we were talking about I was talking about <laughs> See, I feel like you're sat in my craft room with me. <laughs> I was talking about adding pop, creating a complementary colour scheme, also using black and white, just to help bring the main colour that we've been working with to life, make it make it really sing. I went through how I created my, this is going to be my chosen colour scheme here, and I said I'd come back and just show you a few ideas. So I'm starting to do my next lot of work now, and I'm going to film little snippets as I go along, not the whole thing, because I'm going to be doing quite a lot here, and then I'll come back and show you all the finished pieces. But I just thought I'll show you some snippets of what I'm doing. just to, So what I've ended up with is, is I, I went with this kind of this is my main shade is kind of limey leafy green it's pretty much a lime green I guess and then I've got a tint that's the the with it mixed with a little bit of white this is a shade with it mixed with a bit of black definitely looks better if I hold it up so you can see it more more of a true color this is just slightly yellower than it looks on camera this was my this is my complementary color to it this kind of a, a red violet and um, this is it mixed with a bit of black. This is my plain black and then I've even put the white on the end. You can just about see it. One of the difficulties has been trying to make this so that it will fit whatever you're doing. Because the idea is that whether you're into art, you know, if you like painting and drawing or stitching or crochet or whatever you like, whatever weaving, whatever arts and crafts you enjoy, you can bring into this project. I'm going to be working mainly in this sketchbook and creating a, a journal it's going to be very messy and very stuffed full and bits and bobs by the time I'm finished <laughs> but I will also be doing stitched pieces that will go in here I'm just going to be doing a little bit of everything some people would would choose to do just a, a stitched book 
or you could just do one stitched square each week inspired by whatever we're working on um, or you could entirely go down the art road and, and do it all as, as painting or you could you know there are so many I can't I can't cover everything um, if you've got any specific questions or you're stuck at all please do shout tag me in the Facebook group find me in discord or leave a comment in the uh, below this video I would say if you haven't already watched the videos running up to this Look at the playlist and and watch from the beginning so that you you know get the gist of it better. Um, the assignment, for want of a better word, for this week was to create a complementary colour scheme, whether with paints and things, or with with bits of fabric or bits of paper or whatever, however you choose to do it. Also add in black and white, and then choose one shape. I've chosen a circle because I just think circles are so easy to work with. Now, if you want to, you can go back through. I've been doing this green book. This was just a warm up exercise, really. And I'm probably going to just finish it, finish this up in my own time. I want to pretty it up a bit and just there's a couple of more things I wanted to include. And then I will put this to one side and this. I'll be done and dusted with this. I might turn this piece of stitchery into a cover for it eventually. But if you preferred to, you could do this next assignment. You could just carry on working in whatever you've been doing already. So if you've done a little book or you've done some, done a piece of stitchery or whatever you've done, rather than start something new, you could now add your pop <laughs> to what you've already been working on. So you could go, if you've got a little book, you could go back through the book and add some little pops of your complementary colour and your black and white, just to give it all a lift and really make, make it sing. And it's the same with stitch. So if I was doing a stitchery, so I've brought these out to show you what I mean, I might just put some of this sari ribbon in here and just have a little flash of this, of this kind of red violet colour. I've got a huge jar of buttons. I might go through my button jar and just have some little pops of the colour of, of the red violet colour there. I've also got this. I could do a little bit of maybe I could do some French knots or something with this crochet cotton, something like that. I've got some of these little beads now. I know I've got a huge store of beads, so I'm going to find some that suit the colour better. This isn't my really my complimentary colour bit. It kind of does the trick all the same. I think I'll probably end up leaving my book green. This is just for me. Um, you do what you want to do. <laughs> but I think with my stitched piece, I might incorporate some of the complimentary colour in it. I've already got some black and white in there. One thing to bear in mind is when you're using a complementary colour scheme, now this isn't a hard and fast rule, but it generally works better if you just use a, a small percentage of the complementary colour. If you try and do 50-50 of both these, it can just be a bit overwhelming and not really it's just sort of shout at you a bit. It's just, I don't know, it, that can work really well as well. You know, it's good to know what these so-called rules are because then you can break them, you know. So totally up to you what you do, but I tend to find I prefer just a little, just a little zing of the complementary colour. But I may totally break that rule myself as I go along as well. So I'm going to put all this to one side for now because I shall finish that off in my own time over the course of this week. And I'm going to go on to my, what I'm going to do for this week's assignment. So this week's assignment was to create you, your colour palette, which is what I've done. Choose one shape. I'm going with circles and then just start playing in your journal. Just create some designs, get, sketch out some ideas, play with the shapes and the colours. Just play in your journal for no, with no particular end goal in sight at all which is what I tend to do. Or if you want to be more structured about it, just work out a design that you might then turn into a stitched square. I, I can't I can't cover every possible every possibility. It's really it's really tricky. But um please do feel free to ask any questions at all. Um, if you're a bit stuck on where to go or you know what you want to do but you're not quite sure how to get started just ask and um, I'll always be happy to help out as will lots of the other people in in the group as well so enough waffle let me show you what I've put together so I found although I mixed up this palette initially with these I just used gouache paint because I do love gouache paints to use I really enjoy them I thought I'd try some other media as well and I've got a few different things to play with and it's one of the other nice things about this project is it's just encouraging us all to dig out all those supplies we haven't been using for ages we've had them stored away and we don't make good use of them in my book it's never a waste of money if you, to, if you spend it on art supplies but it is a waste if you don't use them so i've got a few different water soluble crayons here showing no favoritism at all so i've got a derwent one you can see how underused this is it looks like i've used it once i don't know if i maybe picked it up as a bargain or got it in a kit or something and i've never used it since i don't know how well it's going to work but anyway, you scribble with it and it's um, water soluble. 
So obviously it's going to leave a bit of a scribbly line, but sometimes that's nice. Okay, got um, a couple of these for Neo Color 2. Neo Color 2 is wonderful. Um, so the idea is that you, again, you can you can just leave it as crayon. You can do wrappings with it or anything. You can get really intense color with it. Um, and again, you can water activate it. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see the gouache is one of the reasons I like gouache is that it's it's kind of like a water. It's kind of like an opaque watercolour really is the best way to think of it. But it will remain water active once it's dry. Then I have got an, a Dermant, another Dermant product, Art Bar. I've got a whole load of these in different colours. But yeah, so that's my, that's my black and one of the limey greens. This one looks a bit over yellowy, but actually when you look at it properly, it's very much colour I've got there. This is the Distress Crayon in Crushed Olive. Mm, is it a little bit too olivey? Might be a little bit too olivey, I'm not sure. I think it'd be okay though. I just like it. I love using these. They go on like lipstick. <laughs> I've also got Distress Oxide inks and, and blender brushes to apply those with. I can use stencils and things with them if I, as I, if I want. I can sprinkle them in water and get lovely effects. I can stencil them one over the top of, of each other and that's quite an interesting effect. And I've also got, which I love, I use it a lot, it's one of my Derwin Ink Tense pencils and luckily you can buy these open stock so you can just buy the one if you if there's colours you use a lot you can just replace those individually instead of having to buy the whole set which is really nice and this is one I have bought individually lots of times That's a, it's a black but it's quite a nice kind of soft black if that makes sense <laughs> it's dense but it's soft <laughs> I'm just going to tear this bit off I'm just going to leave this little strip here which is my final uh, palette but I might end up taking it out and just sticking it in as almost like a bookmark in the end. I've also got just a few bits of paper that I'm going to use for collaging. This is some tissue that I got in a, a lovely present that Jackie sent me at one point. <laughs> I love layering tissue up together. I like the way they all show through each other. So that's a bit of a bit of black and white there. I've got that um, limey green, which works with my scheme. This is some decoupage paper I might use that as well again you can see it fits with my scheme plain text paper and, and music paper which I'm going to paint I've got these little circles I've been hoarding for ages they were in a, a pack that Zoe sent me once it's not really quite the right purple but I think I can get away with it I just love the way they layer over other colours and, and they are circles. My chosen shape is circle. Deep purple as well. It's not quite a red violet, but I think in very small amounts I could get away with it. And the same goes for this green, which is from some mapping paper that Tom wrapped up a Christmas present for me. Not really quite white, but I've left it here because I love it. It's also black on the other side. The texture of it's lovely. The only other thing I've got is some of these red rubber stamps that I sometimes use to add pops of uh, usually black I usually use these with black paint or ink and um, I quite like the ones that just add a bit of texture like that and I'm gonna first of all be creating some collage papers onto if I'm gonna take a few sheets out of here and create some collage papers and I use that as well this is what I sat and sketched in front of the telly <laughs> last night some different ideas bearing in mind I'm using circles so, uh, so these are some of the different things I'm going to try. So this is with different ways of um, collaging circles. So I'm just going to hand cut the circles. I'm going to make a whole load of collage, collage papers and hand cut circles. And I've, I've made a note here, try a white black background and a black background. See what difference it is. I'm going to bear in mind that I will use just a little bit of the complementary colour. And, but I might try alternating it, just play with different combinations. So on, on one version, I might have more green and a tiny bit of the violet. And on another one, I might have more violet and a tiny bit of the green. Um, I'll see how I feel. Um, I think it might look really striking with a, with a lot of black in the background as well. Oh, the one other thing I might end up using is white gesso. I haven't got any black gesso at the moment, but I might use some black paint. <laughs> peak, peak. <laughs> this is the idea of this was to maybe do a little new version of my peek a doodle book. And um, if you are in the Discord group, you'll look, oh, and in the Facebook group, you'll see that Kerry's recently posted. She did watch my peek a doodle book video from a way back and uh, did did her own spin on it. It was amazing. Um, so I might do that and just take maybe three pages in my journal and and cut holes so they peek through to each other. Um, and again, one page could be predominantly pink. One could be predominantly green. This one I want to do like a whoops, like a tunnel. So I'll cut out a large circle. 
small one, small one, small one. Uh, so again, that would be like maybe one, two, three, four, five pages. I'll just let them all peek through. I want to try um, some stamps. I'm just going to make some simple circle stamps by die cutting or hand cutting some foam and print sticking it onto a stamping block because um, it's only temporary. So I'll take the circles and then I'll cut them in various ways as I've kind of shown there to remind myself and try stamping out a design and maybe a, um, a more of a repeat design. And I could do that. I've put there fabric and paper. So I, I will try it first in my journal. And then if I, if I like it and if I feel inspired, I'll stamp onto some fabric and try that as well. I loved one thing I saw Susie Q do. She's another one of the YouTubers I will link to. She had some distress stains. I've got one handy. Oh, they're tucked in the back. Um, but she, I, I didn't realise this because they've got these kind of spongy tops. You can take the top off and then just go poof like that and it makes this beautiful splat. So I might try some of that and then stitch into the splat. Quite fancy that idea. This is where like we all share these ideas. We all have these different spins on it and we all get little bits of inspiration from each other. I just love that. I just love that. This is an idea that I'm particularly thinking of stitch, but I, I might just rough it out in the journal and try out some colours and things. But I love the idea of this for like a square, like maybe to do like a like a 10 centimetre square like we did for the swaps. I might have a, maybe a button in the middle or it would just be all stitching and, and just, yeah, it'll be a combination of stitching and buttons and sequins. Maybe a Suffolk puff in the middle would be good. <laughs> um, yeah, I really, I just love the idea of doing that as a stitched square design. I can just see it in my head. Um, and then the other one that I was particularly thinking fabrics um, is this one. And then I have actually written Suffolk Puff. I think I've just done that square thing just to show that it kind of is a grid design, but I wouldn't really do the squares. I'd arrange the circles in quite a, quite a regular kind of grid, but each circle will be very different. I'll layer up different textures of fabric and, and things like that. Here's Shisha. I could do a Shisha mirror, a buttons, Suffolk Puff just circular stitched um, design yeah just uh, I like the idea of splitting them up in different ways like this and I really ideally I'd like to stick all of these things into my one journal at the end so I, what I might end up having to do is take a few pages out to allow for the thickness of putting fabric and stuff in there but that's okay because I'm going to take some <laughs> pages out right now and turn them into collage paper I'm just going to go quiet now probably I'll try and remember to put some music over this for you to listen to but if not you can play music of your choice and I'm just going to start doing some collage papers and then a bit of cutting and sticking and we'll see how we go So this is the gist of what I'm going to be doing. It just doesn't look at any great shakes at the moment, but it's taken me literally five minutes to do. So um, if that actually, <laughs> so I'm going to carry on, do a few sheets of green and a few sheets of my red violet colour. And, and I'll make sure I've got some of the darker versions of my of my chosen colour on here as well. But the black and the white will come in later on when I'm putting it all together. So I'm going to fill those sheets with a good old mixture. I'll do some of the text and music paper as well. And then once they're dry, I'm going to start cutting them up and I'll come back and show you what I'm doing next. I've got a few sheets. I just ended up doing just a couple of each colour. They really don't look, they really don't look all that at the moment. But I promise you, it'll be fine in the end. Trust the process. So now I'm just going to, because my colour, my 
chose it. I keep saying colour instead of shape. I said it at the end of the video last time as well. Because my chosen shape is a circle, I'm just going to hand cut some random circles. I've got a die cutting machine, I could, and I've got a circle cutter. But I don't want these to be perfect circles, so I'm just going to hand cut them. And bear in mind that all through this process, it's just, um, I'm still just playing, and it's just a way of exploring some different shapes and colours with a view to perhaps doing a more kind of finished art piece later or stitched piece. It's just um, explora exploration really and fun. I might cut the middle out of that one. No, I might, yeah, I'm going to cut the middle out of that one. There's not much rhyme or reason to this at the moment except that I want to make sure I've got a whole lot of different sizes so i'm going to go through and cut all of these out and i'll be back again i have finished cutting up all my circles you can see i've got about even numbers of red violet and the limey green yellowy green um and i'm kind of going with my color palette i've gone a little bit away from it but not too far off still works anyway it's a complimentary color palette in my book um, so now i'm gonna just start i'll put purples in one and greens in the other but mostly the next thing I'm going to do is just stick down my circles and then I'll use gesso and paint and go back to my water reactive sticks and, and, the, and my ink tense pencil. I might just make this a double spread so this is prit stick time now and I'm just going to kind of layer them. I'm not going to worry too much about composition and stuff um, but I am going to think about, I tend to like things in odd numbers, I need to think about a good amount of light and dark you know so obviously this one although they're two different colors this one's clearly a lot darker than this one um i suppose that would be the equivalent of that one yeah so i'm just thinking about the light and the dark and then the rest will come later a few minutes of that and then i'll be back when it's finished because if i showed you every minute of this this video would be several days long which none of us wants I think I'm just going to be dithering here for ages so I'm gonna um, you can see the gist of what I'm doing I'm just basically making sure I've got a good mixture of light and dark on each page it's going to be predominantly green on this spread and then predominantly red violet on the on the next two pages I'm making sure I've got a mixture of sizes as well and I will probably kind of do for odd numbers and I'll make sure some of these kind of go off the page and I'll just cut the excess off some of these I will overlap as well and then I might be kind of gessoing around them and then adding in extra color and things as well when it comes to do anything different like that I'll come back and show you I'm just trying to keep this short and I've already failed I have finished sticking all circles in. I've just sort of stopped the two pages because it took me way longer than I thought. I think what I'm going to do now is um, use my brush. I make myself use the big one so I can't get too pernickety. And then I'm going to use a combination probably of this black art stick and the black Chinese black ink tents. Chinese ink, is it called? Wrong one. Actually, that's quite nice to use as well. Graphite matte pencil is quite nice for doing scribbly lines too. Indian ink. There is a Chinese ink one as well. So I'll do that to do some definition between them and things. And then I'll probably get paint pens out as well. I'll do some like dots and things in between them. So, so just so next. And um, I'm going to just show you some uh, a few little highlights of this again. <laughs> and then the other thing is I've cut out, I've used, how many pages is that? two three four five six of these seven pages all together to make this little kind of tunnel so i've cut out ever decreasing circles <laughs> so um i'll do them in different shades of green using some of my different media that i've got there and then i think there's one sort of there's a, a narrower ring there i've marked it p because i think i'll make that page the purpley color 
so it's just a, a ring of it there and then this middle one and I, I would just do pretty much like I did with the collage paper it's not going to be anything uh, different there. it will be a mixture of distressing and some, some of these mediums and then I'll use black around the outlines so I'll come back and show you them I think I'm just really wary of making this go on too long just trying to give you some ideas because everybody's going to be different anyway completely different I'll probably be nobody else will do anything quite like this and we're all gonna uh, be doing our own our own thing with this very much but bear in mind as well is that the um because i've used gouache and other water soluble media they're gonna come off in the um the gesso a little bit so i need to bear that in mind i think i got a pretty good balance here um more of the purple than i thought i would do but it's still a, i would say a good two thirds at least if not three quarters is is the green of course there's already quite a lot of white in the background with these and then i'm gonna add black for definition and i think the gesso will just help to sort of bring everything together and um the other media will go nicely over the top of it okay i'm gonna keep working on this i will be back when there's something a bit more interesting to see what i'm going to do with this is where's that pencil gone again i'll take it downstairs and do this i'm just going to add some uh, just definition to these shapes by running the ink tense pencil around it and then just running a wet finger around it to activate that and it just gives it that little bit of definition i quite like I might even take a little brush down there to do that with me, save having completely black fingers all the time. Ooh, whoops. And then um, again, I might use the same paint pens to just add some little designs. Little just, I'll just do some dots and things like that around there. Yeah, it'll just be kind of uh, kind of doodling really. Oh look, I've ruined that one now. It's all adding to the interest. Yeah, I think I'll I'll take a little brush down with me to make this a bit a bit easier to do, and my and my paint pens. And I'll be back. Hopefully, I'll be back in the morning um, to show you what I've been doing and finish up this video. <laughs> just double checking because i have just sat here and waffled at the camera for 15 minutes without switching it on <laughs> okay let's go through this again now i'm not gonna be able to remember what i've already told you and what i haven't <laughs> this is where i got to last night i think i think when i finished filming i had just started collaging these circles onto this page um i had a lovely time last night indian ink colored um ink tense pencil to go around some of my circles and then activated them with water i also use this servant art bar which is another water soluble kind of crayon to add a bit more depth to some of the black i might add more of that as well um really enjoyed going in with the paint markers so i just used these three the color of that one was perfect i didn't have a good green but the black and white were brilliant as well i, I quite enjoyed making these different marks over here over the black to give it a bit more life I, I left some of the background white as well just for a bit of change in contrast so i've got you know the, it's still m more of the green not quite so much of the um red violet color plenty of um white space as well to give your eyes a bit of a rest and a bit of black to add a, add a bit of a definition to everything um so yeah really really enjoyed doing that um and i can imagine this translating into a stitched project later on or another or a more elaborate art project of some of some kind but i just yeah I've, i just i really enjoyed it and for me that's that's pleasing to look at i, I should just yeah love it and one of my favorite color combinations too so i didn't get so far with this although I'm, I'm happy with where it's gone so far um but you can see that although i've got my i've got my little pop of the contrast color but actually the tonal value is still pretty much the same all through apart from this bit which is more yellowy i reckon if you took a photo of that and turned it into black and white it's probably only this bit that would show up as being lighter than the others M maybe this but i'm not sure i think the tonal value is pretty phew, so what it needs now is the is is some black and some white to brighten it up give it a bit of a lift give it a bit of pop um but what i wanted to do i'm gonna have to paint the off facing sides because that's gonna bleh. i know it's only a working journal but i still need it i don't, can't look at that <laughs> um but i want each page to kind of as you turn it over i want them to look interesting in their own right i might go through with paint pens or uh, mix up some some gouache again and just add some sort of texture and pattern and stuff to these i'm not sure yet but yeah i definitely want to paint the other side as well so as you look back through it it'll look nice as well 
I like this. I like uh, I like that with more of the the red violet and less of the less of the green. I actually quite like that. And that is one of my favourite. I love that. So I'm going to add some black around to sort of frame each of the holes. I might even think about writing some words. I feel like I could write words around there. That's just occurred to me. That now uh, see, giving myself ideas now. Where's my? Uh, I love these pit matte graphite pencils so I could and I think this would be nice for stitching in as well I could just write words here or just pseudo words even um so it kind of almost looks like writing but it's not I quite like that <laughs> my real writing doesn't look much different from that Tom will tell you <laughs> so I quite like that idea now I'm gonna have to do some here now so it carries across but the ideas that I haven't had time to do yet these I'm gonna transfer into my sketchbook i might even just tear them out of here i just um make a little tuck spot in the in the journal i can just stash them into this is i i want this to be a messy a messy journal so then i did a little bit of stitching as well let me put this to one side for a minute so a little prompt for this week my homework for this week if you like <laughs> was to create this complementary colour scheme based on using the main colour just a pop of a complementary colour so my main colour was green and I've gone with this red violet colour and I'm going to do the same here in a little stitched square so just a little 10 centimetre square like we've been doing for the stitchery swaps and I think I'm going to go with this kind of um, grid design that I've sketched out there make little circles in different ways so I've made a little tiny Suffolk puff there I would do lots and lots of stitching around this I might do some shisha work with a little with a little round mirror I might put a button all sorts of different ways of making circles out of fabric and, and stitching got some of this fabric here which I thought I'd cut a, little, a couple of pieces of this because I think that look really nice on there and to add obviously not all green I need to add my pop and I did think I could just coil up some of this ribbon that's in exactly the right colour this sari ribbon I'll do it better than that but basically just make a make a coil like a like almost like a flower there it'd be quite fun and I've got sequins in that colour too as well as the green ones and I've got all different threads um, again I will bear in mind that um, it needs to be one main colour and a pop of the complementary so most of this will be green with a pop of the red violet or it could be the other way around it doesn't matter I've also got this piece to finish <laughs> it's like I just keep on and on and on stitching into it I found this but I need to incorporate this bit and use it up I will put some of this through it I think then to start and to some of these sequins which are just the right colour not all in a line like that just a few scattered about and I'm going to have a look through my button stash and see what I've got there so oh and I pulled out a couple of these pieces of felting wool because I thought I could felt some little um kind of washer shapes in inspired by something I saw Jackie doing actually <laughs> Jackie Perry she did some of them on there so I, I think um that would be nice as well and I put this in my basket when I was first picking out my goodies for this project I put this in didn't use it because it had too much other colors in but of course now I've introduced my complementary color that's fine so some of that will be going in here as well and I'm going to see if I can turn this whole thing into a cover for my book so um I would say if you're wondering what to do if you if you want to join in but you're not sure uh, what to do at this stage it's a very difficult there's so many different people going so many different ways with this which is exactly what we want it's very hard for me to say do this kind of thing but I would say if you're just looking for ideas for um, stitching at this stage take your whatever your chosen colour was mine was green say yours was blue pick the complementary colour that would be for blue it would be orange it doesn't have to be a bright orange it could be a, a an apricot or a peach or a, a, a terracotta pick one shape I chose a circle you could just as well choose a leaf and just create a simple design and make a little slow stitched piece or you could I'm going to come back up to here now you could carry on working in if you if you've been making a little journal carry on working in that if it's a fabric journal just keep adding to it you could if you've if you've already started creating a, a little green book like I did you could go through now and add your comp your pop of complementary and your black and white into it and find ways to incorporate whatever your chosen shape is yeah I hope that I hope that gives you enough ideas it's really it's really difficult because I want this to to work for for everybody um it's not the kind of project where I can say this week we are going to do this 
and next week we are going to do that it's just like giving ideas and guidance and leaving you to kind of find your own way but i'm very happy to give specific ideas if anybody wants it i'm very happy to answer any questions you might have don't be afraid to ask questions you can find me on discord or in the facebook group and tag me um you can message me if you want to but I would say that if you've got a question, you won't be the only one. There will be lots of other people who have the same question. It is a very nobody's nobody's judgy in, in in either in our Discord community or the Facebook group. We're a lovely bunch, and um, everybody will always you know people will will help you out and answer questions. And we're all about encouraging and inspiring each other. Um, so don't be afraid if you've got any questions, do ask. But I would say if you're not sure where to start, keep it simple just jump in grab your colors in whatever medium you want to work in and just jump in and have a go there are no right and wrong answers just play and see where it takes you if you if you're the sort of person that needs something specific to do i would say if you're into your art make some collage papers Cho choose your, you need to choose your color scheme first and just shape make some collage papers and cut them like like you saw me starting to do um, I will add, I did a while back, I did um, a video, I can't remember what it was called, I'll link to it. Um, and it was just really about how to do a, a simple step-by-step -step mixed media collage that you, on one big sheet of paper that you could then cut up. And that would give you a good, even as a complete beginner, it would be easy enough to follow. And you could do something like that for this. You don't have to use, you don't have to paint your own collage papers. You could just use magazine papers or pattern paper if you've got some or leftover wrapping paper, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just need to find your chosen colours, decide on your chosen shape and start cutting and sticking. Take out whatever media you've got in, in the colours you, you're working with and just start playing with them. And if you want to make it less daunting, just, just do a double spread in your sketchbook just one double spread don't try and do any more if you know chances are if you're like me you won't know when to stop but <laughs> if you're more into the stitching i would say keep it really simple and easy just by doing one square like the one i was just showing you or work on a larger piece or start doing something like a like a spot like a snippet roll if you've already started working in say green if you like me in green you could either start again now or go back into the work you've already done and add your complimentary colour and your whatever your chosen shape is so I'm going to stop waffling now I'm going to go thank you very much for joining me um, have fun in whatever you're doing with this project and I will see you again really soon <laughs>